Hello everyone, Ron Broussard with another first call and in this first call, I'm going to give you five secrets of getting over a difficult situation. Our experience in our journey through life is filled with moments, moments of love, passion, creativity, connection, joy and laughter. But understand that learning, evolving and growing starts through life's ups and downs, those experiences that round us out and make us better as a person, both mentally and spiritually. The key is not to let life's difficult situations get the best of you. So here are my five secrets to help you get through difficult situations. First, think about the most difficult situation you've endured in your life. If you're going through something as you watch this right now, how do you feel? These feelings you're feeling, even though you tell people you're okay, quietly affect your thinking, your decision making and the quality of your life. And we've all faced this. Now, imagine how you would feel if you were able to get over these feelings. By get over, <laughs> I mean no longer suffering over something that happened in the distant past. I know this is possible because I have both personally come to peace with extremely difficult, heartbreaking situations, and I would like to share what works for me. First, Practice noticing and then letting go of your ideals. Now, when a difficult situation from your past stirs up that anger, sadness, and all those emotions, it means there's some type of ideal that you're attaching to this that's triggering your suffering. Now, it can be tough to notice this ideal at first, but with practice, you'll be able to see it. There may be an ideal situation that you wanted to happen and you held on to that, but it doesn't match your present reality. But this ideal, even if it makes sense, it's not helping you, it's hurting you. If you want the past to be different than what it is, you'll still be sad, angry, or whatever you're going through for the rest of your life. Noticing what you're holding on to is that first step. Now, that second step is letting that ideal go. Make a conscious choice to let it go. It's happened, there's nothing you can do to change it, it's past. Letting go of this means embracing the reality that everyone is human and human beings sometimes makes mistakes. There's nothing ideal about it, but that's the truth and it must be accepted. Peace of mind in the long run is about allowing yourself to be perfectly okay with what is rather than wishing for and worrying about what is not. What is is what's real. The rest of you just you arguing with life. Third, release your judgments. It's impossible to get over a difficult situation to let it go if you're still obsessively judging what happened. Then ask yourself, do you believe it should have happened or not happened at all? Do you believe that the outcome should have been different? I know I was going through that. Do you take what happened personally? Do you blame someone else? for what happened? Do you blame yourself? Do you believe that the situation is too impossible to get over? Now, if you caught yourself thinking yes to any one of these questions that I was just talking about, then what's preventing you from getting over it is judgment. Your judgments about what happened in the past continue to keep your situation present in your mind and thus it continues to impact your daily life. Now, you may be thinking, what happened was unbelievably horrible. I can't even ever conceive of ever getting over this. But releasing your judgment does not mean you're pleased with what happened or that you support it but rather you're eliminating the negative burden you're carrying around by continually judging yourself by it. When you let go of your negative judgments, you automatically replace some of that victim mentality with acceptance and presence. And acceptance and presence together will free your mind. Now, the fourth thing is to find gratitude in the present moment. Despite the situation, Happiness doesn't always make us grateful, but gratitude always helps us smile. Now, some people say that's a cliche, but actually it's not. 
Gratitude, and we've talked about this a lot, is the foundation. And being happy is just experiencing life with a genuine and grateful heart for what you have now in the present moment. Expressing gratitude is so simple, so I know you're asking yourself, how could I possibly make that big of a difference? See, being grateful starts with being present. You can't appreciate life if you're not paying attention to it and you're looking in your past. And the truth is, we make our present situations much worse when we replay difficult past situations in our head. In the present moment, our real situation is rarely as bad as we make it out to be. So, when your mind drifts into the past or speculates about the future, what we must do is just catch ourselves. Look at everything that we've done from that situation until now, the present. Only then can we accept the moment as it is. Remember, this is a real world. It's not an ideal world. And your reality contains a silver lining. You have to choose to see it. And the last thing, and I love this part, is to ensure that you have the right people and the right relationships in your corner. It's happened. It's in the past. Now you really need to realign your relationship with people that's gonna be with you through difficult times. And not only when you just have high times, if they have to question your past, then they truly don't know you in the present. And the past is just that. And you've grown past that into the person that you are today. So don't get caught not having the right people in your life when you need somebody to confidant, to talk to, to share your emotions with. So, the one thing that my four secrets have in common is the importance of responding to life's difficulties more effectively. When you can let go of your ideals, judgments, and self-pity parties, I do that myself, you give yourself the space required to respond to life's difficult situations more effectively, and that changes everything. And this can apply to, you know, everyday situations too, not just on life's larger scale catastrophes, regardless of the situation at hand. When we respond in emotion, we only compound our problems. Taking a deep breath, or 10, or 20, we are responding calmly. So we're able to handle any situation, whether it's an emergency, or an unexpected loss, or whatever's going on in your life. Bottom line, you can't control everything that happens, or everything that has happened, but you can control the way you respond. And in your response is your greatest power. Now, it's your turn. Listen, hey, comment below on this video and tell me which point resonated the most with you and why. And if you have anything else to add about it, listen, add to this. I'm, I would love to hear it. Just leave your comments below, share your thoughts and insights, or more importantly, share this video with someone that needs it during their difficult time. Thanks for taking time to watch this first call. I hope you take these secrets to heart. Don't waste time thinking about your past situations and you'll be spending more time celebrating in your present moments. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.